Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. We got a cool night last night. We got some frost. It didn't go below freezing, but everything was frosted over in the morning. I did manage to get a accent planting or accompaniment uh, for my large forest. I'll show you a close up of it. Here's what I came up with. A stone kind of land on this side. You can see the moss. Sand on the other side and a little kind of island at the back there. So very small, but I think it looks good. It kind of matches the planting quite nicely. Same kind of stones, same color pot and same moss sand kind of theme. So I think that'll be good. I noticed the larch forest is changing color quite dramatically. I can notice a change just overnight. The main two trees up front here are turning yellow now. So that's kind of exciting. I think, you know, the show is in two days and I think the forest is going to look quite nice for the show. The KW Bonsai Society has an in-person meeting tonight and I'm going to be doing a demonstration on getting a tree ready for the show. So I've got to pick out a tree that I'll be taking tonight and also one that I'll be working on today. I did the larch forest yesterday, so I was thinking for today's video, I would work on my Sarissa, which is way back there in full flower. So I'll, I'll get that out for today's project. And for tonight, I think I'll do the Avatar Grove. Down here, I have the Avatar Grove, my Eastern White Cedar Forest. So it needs a lot of cleanup, the moss. It needs a lot of landscape work, some sand, some moss, maybe fixing up some stones. I've got to clean the trees up, do a final pruning and get the pot prepared. So I'll be doing that all tonight at the club meeting. I have got my Sarissa out on the bench. You can see all the flowers on top. They call it the tree of a thousand stars and you can see why. It's like a whole Milky Way worth of stars there. Yeah, really, really cool. So it definitely needs pruning. You can see how long and shaggy the canopy is. There's no definition between pads. The soil needs cleaning up. There's a lot of moss is growing in by itself. Yeah, quite a bit of cleanup work to do today on it. Should be quite fun. I did notice on this side, you can see this one branch is a little weak. And I think I think it's just because maybe it's in an awkward position and the tree's just kind of shedding it. Um, maybe there's stronger branches growing around. We'll have a look at it. We'll, you know, crawl underneath, have a look at the structure of it and see what's going on with that branch. But I just noticed all summer it's kind of been growing weakly. You know, the leaves are still healthy, but just not with vigor like some of these branches shooting out. And it's probably to do with the flow lines going to that branch. It's probably just doesn't have a, a direct route for sap to flow to it. It's probably something awkward with it. So the rest of the tree is really, really healthy. I've got a lot of the old leaves that I've got to pick out, the yellow leaves. And that happens all the time in Sarissa's. They're constantly shedding leaves, the old leaves, and growing in new shoots. Yeah, so lots of kind of fun work to do on this tree today, getting it show ready. My first step with this tree is I want to prune the canopy. When you're looking above, I want to prune the oval shape. Um, so to do that, I, I have to know my extents. Like I can see, you know, front to back, I want to prune it back to about here at the back, maybe to about here. And the sides are fairly obvious, but I want to come down to the front view and make sure the tree is still balanced. I don't want it growing longer on one side and shorter on one side so it looks kind of out of balance. I want the tree to look balanced around the trunk. So I'll put the camera in the front view position, have a look at it, kind of analyze the width of the canopy and see where I want to prune it to. Here is a look at the tree from the front view and you can see it's grown quite a bit since the last time I showed it, which was the Toronto Spring Show. So I'm just analyzing it. I, I've got this tree shifted in the pot quite a bit to the right hand side, uh, kind of counterbalanced by the rocks and the zebra here. I think in future it'll be shifted a little more central. 
So I'm looking at the width of the canopy. Kind of, I'm about here and here, which, you know, is fairly symmetrical around the trunk line. You know, I don't have one side way longer than the other. I think it looks fairly balanced. So I think it's just a matter of kind of going with the proportions it's at now and just pruning away all the long shoots. I'm styling this tree in the Pyrenees style, which is a kind of a umbrella shaped canopy, very flat on top. I also want it curved underneath the foliage. So the canopy is a thin curved layer of foliage on top. And I also want to separate the foliage into separate pads so you can kind of see through the canopy a bit to give it some space and it'll help miniaturize the, the tree, give it that image of a an ancient acacia tree in the plains of Africa. There's a YouTube channel called Blue Sky Bonsai. There's a YouTube channel called Blue Jay Bonsai. So I'm thinking blue, blue scissors bonsai. So here I go. I've got the blue scissors. I'm going to begin by looking straight down on top of the tree and pruning the oval shaped profile to the canopy. All right, you're looking at the top view of the tree. So here I go with my pruning. So I'm thinking widthwise somewhere about here. So here I go. I think that's looking pretty good for that end. Maybe a little heavy back here. There's that sarissa smell. Okay, so let's uh, prune this side now. I think that's pretty good. A little pruning front and back now. Pruning off these really long shoots sticking up. They'll get more, they'll get pruned more accurately later. Okay, let me have another look at this oval shape. Uh, I may be a little heavy here. I mean, it doesn't have to be a perfect oval, but it has to be kept in check. You can't have you know, one side growing out way more vigorously than the rest of the tree. So that's why I'm trying to kind of keep this oval shape in check and then just growing a little larger each year. That way you uh, keep the tree balanced, hopefully avoiding, you know, weak branches like this. Okay, I think that's it for the top view. I I'm happy with that. I think it's got a fairly nice oval to it. Here is a look at the tree from the front view now and you can see how heavy it looks up top. It's like a big thick layer of foliage. So I've got to thin that down. I've got to take the canopy back, kind of tapering it off at the edges. You can see the start of my rounded underside of the canopy, also the rounded part on top. So that kind of gives you an idea of where I'm going with the top shape there, about there, and the underside see if we can get a little more curvature to it. It's coming along that Pyrenees style. I also mentioned that in the last video that I'm trying to get the foliage pads on the outside on an angle so they kind of follow the curvature of the umbrella shaped canopy. So I'll try and achieve that today too. So I think I think the next step is to get that top profile in check. I don't know if I've mentioned this before but this tree here, my Sarissa, I bought it from Eldon Lease. It was a small cutting about this big. Eldon Lease is one of the founders of the Kitchener Waterloo Bonsai Society. And he had a, a tour. Um, it, it was part of a pottery tour. And we went around to various artist houses and he was on the tour. And he was selling, I think it was in a little 
yogurt, yogurt container or something, uh, these little sarissa cuttings. And I remember thinking at the time, I wanted to buy something off him because he was, you know, a fellow club member. And everything was pretty expensive, but this little sarissa was the cheapest thing he had for sale there. And even that, I think, was like $6 for this little tiny cutting. And I, th I thought, oh, it's a lot of money to pay for a little tiny cutting, but I bought it. And uh, this is the tree today. Uh, yeah, <laughs> many, many, many years later, I think almost 30 years later. So this little, little shoot, this little cutting turned into something quite nice. All right, I'm going to begin pruning the canopy. The first thing I want to look at, if I look in the side view, I've noticed that it's a little taller here than it is back here. So I've got to equalize that out to begin with. So here I go. So I don't want a lot of curvature in this view. I want it fairly flat. I want most of my curvature to be in the other view. If you have a lot of curvature in this view, well, you won't get a, a thin layer of a, a canopy. It'll be thicker because you'll have that curvature front and back. If it's fairly flat, then you, you can get this thin layer of foliage when viewed from the front or the back. And that's how trees grow because in nature, as I've said, you know, the sun rises in one direction, goes across the sky and sets over here. You never get the sun shining in these directions. So you always get more of a rounded shape this way where the sun travels across the sky than this way where it's always kind of flat because the sun is always above but it's never over this direction or this direction. I hope that makes sense. So let me have another look. Um, I'm still heavy on this side. So I'm pruning it back to kind of Equalize the canopy in the the end views. And this is rough pruning for now. It'll get refined. Okay, so I think that's taking care of that view, the left and right hand view. It looks quite equal. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to work on the front view. Getting that rounded shape. So you can see from the front view, it's quite flat on top right now, which is good. I don't want it too, too much of a rounded shape, but just a bit. And I've studied many pictures of acacias and some are very flat on top. Some are quite domed. So this one's sort of somewhere in between. All right, well, here I go. This is always the, uh, yeah, this is the, <laughs> this is what pruning's all about, getting that shape. So here I go. And I'm going to start a little long and I can refine it as I go. And yes, I'll be pruning all my flowers off, but that's okay. I wanted this tree to grow as much as I could over the summer and it grew really well it got all its you know a very healthy vigorous which is what you want you don't want it weak if you're always pruning it they get weak and they die It's getting better, there's the front. Just checking all the views as I work on it. Let's move it a little more central here. So it's looking quite domed. Um, I think I've taken a fair amount off 
the left and right hand side, but I think I've got to take more off the top. Getting it a little flatter looking. I think I've got just too much of a dome shape. It looks too much like a tropical tree rather than a acacia. This tree has lots of vigor in it because it's been growing all summer, so there's no problem, you know, doing some fairly hard pruning on it. You can take it. I think the tree is getting very close. I think the rest of the work will be pruning the individual branches with shears. I think the shape is quite close now, so. All right, so I think the next step, I've kind of got it sheared to the profile. I need to go in and pick out all those yellow, all these yellow leaves and debris and just clean up the tree. Here's a look at the canopy. So in here you can see all these yellow leaves. Got to pick those out. I'm going in with the tweezers now and just picking out all the yellow leaves. I have got the canopy all cleaned up of its yellow and brown leaves, so it's looking nice and clean. I, uh, it took quite a while. I had to go in every branch and also underneath and get all the dead leaves out, all the debris and that. So, yeah, it's pretty clean now. The next step, I want to clean up the sur surface of the soil. I've got a lot of leaves that have fallen down. And at the back here, I have some suckers growing up from the root base, so I'll start with those. Here's a look at the suckers coming up from the roots, so I'll just kind of find out where they start from, way down here. I should prune them off. Like that. So now I'll come in with the tweezers and clean up all my debris from the soil. And there's lots of it, so... This might take a little while too. I have got the soil surface all cleaned up on the tree now. There was a lot of leaves and debris that had fallen down. So the root base is looking really, really nice. Nice and radial. Getting some good, good surface roots. So my next step, you can see I had some moss clumps uh, kind of to resemble bushes and the rest of the terrain was supposed to be, you know, an arid, dry terrain. It's kind of changed. You can see there's clumps of moss growing in everywhere. And this main, or this one clump of moss back here is just spread like crazy. It's not too bad at the back, but at the front here, it's developing quite a carpet of moss. So I'm going to prune up my moss bushes and get them looking a little more trim. I'll come in with the tweezers and just pick away that moss that I don't want. Okay, that's got that one kind of looking a little better. I'll have to put some more of that red sand around it. I think all these new tufts of moss that have grown in look okay. It's, it's kind of a nice splattering of green color on the landscape. I think it looks very natural. Um, so yeah, I'll just add a bit of red sand around here. And then I think the next step is to clean the trunk on the tree. It's just getting too green looking. It should be a light kind of whitish beige color. And it's just too, too lush looking. Hopefully it won't take off too much bark, but uh, we'll see how it goes. I've got my sifted red turfus here. I've got some aquarium gravel that Tom sent me. And I've got some red sand from the hobby store. So, yeah, I, I'm not sure what I used on here. I think it was mainly the turfus. So I'll, uh, I'll put some of that. Let me get my spatula here. I'll put a scoop of that down here by the moss just kind of like that I think that looks good 
give that a water and it should settle it in quite nicely. There's also a bit of a low spot here. I could put a little more turfus around this clump of moss. Here's a look at the surface of the soil now. So it blended in quite nicely. Yeah, that's looking good. All right, next I'm going to tackle the trunk on the tree and maybe some of these upper branches too. All right, here I go on the trunk. So I'm going to wet it all down. I'm just going to, this is just rainwater. Hopefully that'll soften the lichen up a bit. Then I've got a toothbrush and I'll wet that. And start brushing. And you know, if bark comes off, it comes off. Okay, I, I think I think I'm done. I don't want to go up too high in the branches, otherwise it never end. You could be scrubbing branches all day long, I think. But I think that's high enough. I've gone kind of up into the canopy here. Yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. I'll give it a final spray down. And then I'll give it a water just to kind of wash that water and algae out of the soil. Well, there it is. I've given it a watering. So you can see the trunk is much, much lighter now. Looks quite nice. Looks more like an acacia tree. Yeah, I'm liking that. My accent plant for my Sarissa in the Toronto show was this little clump of jades that uh, Matt gave to me. They, they had grown quite tall and I pruned them back. They're just starting to come out with new shoots on them. So I think, you know, they're looking good, good for the, the KW show. Um, I'm going to give them a watering and put them back in the greenhouse. I should be pretty happy there until the show. I'm going to work on the canopy of the Sarissa now, separating the foliage into pads, getting some separation between each kind of branch structure. Should be kind of interesting, so here I go. I've done a lot of videos on doing this pad separation. I just follow the branch up, kind of isolate the clump that goes with that branch and trim the edges so there's space between the all the adjacent branches behind it. So you get these little foliage pads with separation and it looks really nice. This operation of separating all the pads takes a fair while. So I'll be working away at it. So this is a very difficult process because you've got to prune off branches to get the space between them and it's always hard deciding which one has to go. You want to naturally keep all your branch ramification, but sometimes, you know, as I said before, less is more sometimes on a tree. Getting those spaces is very important. I am making good progress on the tree. I've got kind of the front part thinned out, separated into pads, but I have a long way to go. But I have to go over the community gardens now, so I'm going to have to take a break. And there's a lawnmower going, so I better leave it for a little later on. Hi everyone, I'm back from the community gardens. We did a little work in the spiral orchard. I'm not going to get a chance to finish my Sarissa tonight because I've got to go off to the Bonsai Society's meeting tonight. So I'll have to continue the work on the Sarissa tomorrow. I've got the Sarissa safely back in the greenhouse here. So yeah, I'll continue the work on that tomorrow morning. I'll be taking my Eastern White Cedar Forest to the bonsai meeting tonight. 
to work on it doing show prep. So I'll be bringing along my moss and my tools and everything I need to get this looking really good. Off I go to the KW Bonsai Society's meeting, the last one before the show. So that's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone. <music>